Path 43, welcome to your second bonus deep dive from chapter 10. If you read through this, you can see that this problem is talking about trains. We're trying to look at the the relationship between the number of rail cars and how much fuel those those rail cars wind up tacking on to your overall fuel consumption. But I do want to point out I have two numerical variables here. And whenever you have two numerical variables, you're going to be looking at something along the lines of regression analysis. And typically in this class, we'll look at linear regression, but you can definitely move beyond it. But the key here is the two numerical variables. That's what kind of clues us into, okay, this is regression analysis. I'm not just going to make a, a histogram or a box plot. I have two numerical variables, so I need to make a scatter plot. Now, let's look at the units for each of these. Um, on this first variable here, it is a frequency count, so the units are the numbers of rail cars, where over on this fuel consumption, they're telling us units per mile, okay? Now, we have some actual data in here, and we could go make a scatter plot with this. You could plug this into your lists and go ahead and make a scatter plot, and you could run linear regression, and you could get the residual plot, but we actually don't need to because they did it for us. So if we take a look at these graphs, the first thing I notice, I see my x variable down here and my y variable over here. So this must be my original scatter plot. Plus, they told us I had a scatter plot. If we look over on the second graph, if you look at the title, right, it's got residuals, and you can see the residual on the y-axis. Now, it says versus the fitted values, so they must have done some kind of transformation right? That's why there's this phrase fitted value. And I say transformation because if you look at our initial x variables, it was from 20 to 50. And this is going from 50 to 120. So they messed with it somehow. And that's fine. That happens all the time. But we've got our residual plot. And there's a bunch from this mini tab. I can actually see the LSRL right here. They wrote it out. And if I wanted to, I could look at the y-intercept and the slope right there. Now you see this is saying really 10.67 and they rounded it to 10.7. 2.1495, they rounded it to 2.95, 2.15, excuse me. Great. The other thing that I want to take a look at here is R squared. We're going to use that definitely to find R. That's how we would um, find that. So there's all sorts of information in here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first question. It says, is this linear model appropriate for this data? So there are three factors you need to address when you go through this. You need to take a look at your scatter plot. You need to take a look at your R value and you need to take a look at your residual plot. There's actually one more factor that would go into this decision, but we don't cover it in this class. And just just as a note, it has to do with this number right here, the average residual length. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of collect some happy and sad faces. I'm going to look at the residual plot, I'm going to look at my R, and I'm going to look at my scatter plot. So I'm going to scooch up here just so I can do it on this screen. If I look at my original scatter plot, I think that looks pretty linear, right? So I'm going to say this one's going to get the happy face. When I look at my residual plot, I don't really see a pattern in here, and that's the most important happy face that I'm going to keep in mind. Now, my mini tab output doesn't actually give me R, it gives me R squared, but if I know R squared is 96.7%, that would mean R squared was the decimal 0.967, and if I square root that decimal, I'm going to get that R is either positive or negative 0.983. But the thing that I have to take into consideration is that my slope is positive. If my slope is positive, and you can see it here, then R has to be positive. So I can definitively say here R is positive 0.983. And from that, I can build my answer to part A. So my scatter plot was linear. I would give myself a happy face there. R was 0.983, that is strong. I would give myself a happy face there. And the residual plot had no pattern. And I would give myself a happy face there. So I would say yes, the linear model is appropriate. And my reasons behind it, it were the three factors I just said. The scatter plot is linear.
the correlation coefficient is strong. And there's no pa pattern in the residual plot. There we go. All right, the next question is asking us to interpret the slope. All right, so the slope, if I go back to my LSRL, let me head back here for a moment. Here's my slope at 2.1495. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. Two point, oops, let me move my hand there. 2.1495, I'm gonna make that a unit ratio. All right, and we're gonna look at the units. Now the units are always y over x, so let's go ahead and swap that out. My y units here, they told me it was units per mile, and my x units are literally the number of rail cars. All right, so for every additional, if we look at this, for every one unit, so for one rail car added to the train, right, and this is number of rail cars, all right, my y variable is fuel consumption. The units here are literally units per mile. And our slope was 2.1495. So I'm gonna put all of that together into a sentence. So for every, and I'll put additional rail car added to the train because that's what they're trying to say. Like if you have a train, Every time you tack on a rail car, you're going to increase fuel consumption. So for every, I'll say, additional rail car added to the train, the predicted average now I have to decide between increase and decrease, but I'm gonna opt for increase because that slope was positive. So the predicted average increase in fuel consumption is 2.1495 units per mile. There we go, all right. All right, the next thing asks us to interpret R squared. Now, R, I'm gonna just put this here. R, we have the vocab term correlation coefficient. And then R squared is the coefficient of determination. So they have similar names. Let me write determination. Similar names in that they both have the word co coefficient in it, but one refers to r, one refers to r squared. All right, so if we take a look at the interpretation of r squared, let's go find our percentage. All right, there it is, 96.7. So 96.7%, and then the, the template for this would say that 96.7% of the variation in our y variables, which is fuel consumption, Let me put this in a little box, okay? Can be explained by the variation in the number of rail cars. All right, or you could just say by the number of rail cars. And, and just to give us an idea, I'm gonna scroll back up for a moment. What I'm saying here is, this variation, the fact that this looks like it's spread from, gosh, what do we have, like 52 to 122, just looking at it, that is definitely varying, right? They're not staying constant. This change can be explained by the fact that the number of rail cars are changing, or at least a good proportion of that change can be explained by the change in the number of rail cars. And that's what R squared is, is talking about. Okay, last one. If I scroll back down, it says, would it be reasonable to use your fitted regression equation to predict fuel consumption for a train on this route if it had 65 cars? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our data. 
and see how we're, we're doing with that. So if I take a look at my data, and I'm gonna erase some of my scribbles here so we can see stuff. If I look at my data on the X in terms of the rail cars, to me it looks like the lowest number of rail cars I had in my sample was 20 and the highest was 50. And they're asking me to predict for 65 rail cars. So we need to be careful because we're extrapolating pretty far outside of our initial data range and that can get really dicey. So would it be reasonable? I, I would say no, all right, no. All right, the data doesn't contain information about fuel consumption for any trains longer than 50 cars, right? And so I would say that the data does not contain any information about fuel consumption for trains with more than 50 cars. Uh, this would be an example of extrapolation. That's how I would leave that. All right, so there I'm going to scroll back. Actually, I'll just leave it here. But that is the end of bonus deep dive number two. Thanks.